composer Arnold Schoenberg here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we return to our exclusive interview with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, I spoke to him inside the Ecuadorian embassy in London on Monday. Julian Assange, let's stay with the United States for a moment with the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which certainly doesn't only involve the United States. But there's a huge debate within the United States about it right now. And I dare say um, uh, some of that debate is as a result of what, what WikiLeaks revealed. For some people, this treaty that will determine 40 percent of the global economy, the only thing that we have seen about it comes from WikiLeaks. Explain what the TPP is and the information that you got, that you put out about this top secret agreement. Well, the, the TPP uh, is an international treaty uh, that has 29 different chapters. Uh, we have released four of them, um, and we are trying to get um, the remainder. Uh, it's uh, for the information that has been released through uh, the chapters that we got hold of uh, and through some congressmen who have seen uh, the contents of some of the others, but they are not allowed to write it down. They can go into a room and look at it. They can go into a room. It has been, it's not formally classified, but it's been treated as if it was classified in terms of how the information is being managed. Um, they go into a room. Uh, if they try and take notes, the notes have to be handed over to the government for safekeeping. And of course, congressmen under those situations won't take notes. Uh, so it is very um, well guarded from the press and the majority of people and even from uh, congressmen. But 600 uh, US companies are part of the process and have been given access to various uh, parts of the TPP. Okay. So <clears throat> it's a, the largest ever um, international economic treaty that has ever been um, negotiated, uh, very considerably larger than NAFTA. It is mostly not about trade. Uh, only five of the 29 chapters um, are about traditional trade. The others are about regulating the internet, uh, what internet internet service providers have to collect information, they have to hand it over to companies under certain circumstances. It's about regulating labour, uh, what labour conditions can be applied, regulating um, <clears throat> whether you can favour uh, local industry, uh, regulating um, the hos hospital healthcare system, privatisation of hospitals. Uh, so essentially every aspect of the modern economy, uh, even banking services, are in the TPP. And so that is erecting and embedding a new ultra-modern neoliberal structure in US law and in the laws of the other countries that are participating and is putting in a treaty form. And by putting in a treaty form, that means with uh, 14 countries involved, uh, it means it's very, very hard to overturn. So if there's a desire, a democratic desire in the United States uh, to go down a different path, uh, for example, to introduce more public transport, uh, then you can't easily change the TPP treaty because you have to go back and get agreement of the other nations involved. Um, now, looking at that example, what if um, the government does, or a, um, a state government decides it wants to build a, a hospital somewhere? Uh, and there's a private hospital has been erected nearby. Well, the TPP gives the constructor of the private hospital the right to sue the government over the expected, the loss in expected future profits. This is expected future profits. This is not an actual loss that has been sustained uh, where there's a desire to be compensated. This is a claim about the future. And we know from similar uh, instruments where governments can be sued over free trade treaties, um, that that is used to construct the chilling effect on environmental and health regulation law. Um, for example, uh, Togo, Australia, um, Uruguay, all being su sued um, by tobacco companies, Philip Morris, uh, the leading one, um, to prevent them from introducing health warnings 
uh, on the cigarette packets. That we have in the United States on our own cigarette packages. Yes. And it's, it's not even even playing field. Let's say you say, okay, well, we're going to make it easier for companies to sue the government. Maybe that's right. Maybe the government is too powerful and companies should have a right to sue the government under various circumstances. But it's only multinationals that get this right. U.S. companies operating purely in the U.S. Um, in relation to investments that happen in the U.S. will not have this right. Whereas large um, companies that are multinationals that have registrations overseas can structure things such that they're taking an investment in the U.S. and that then gives them the right uh, to sue the government over it. Now, it's not so easy to get up these cases and win them. Um, however, um, the chilling effect, the concern um, that there might be such a case is severe. Uh, each one of these cases, on average, governments spend more than $10 million dollars for each case to defend it, even successfully. So if you have you know, a city council or a, a state considering legislation, and then there's a threat uh, from one of these multinationals about expected future profits, um, they know that even if they have the law on their side, even if this TPP is on their side, um, they can expect